How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. This is a steam engine with part two, part two I should say. Uh, that is the part number two or the second part of the steam engines build. Uh, it's going to be the base. Uh, we got the cylinders all done. Now that took several videos to really show how to do all, to do all that, right? Now, we're going to do the base. The base is, I should say, where's the other one? There we go. And uh, this is the brass one. And uh, we'll turn around here and I'll show it, give you some close up aluminum one. And uh, we'll, we'll try to get these done. And we'll do them together. Uh, just like we're doing the cylinders uh, to get these two steam engines to come to fruition kind of both at the same time. That way I'm, I'm kind of done with those ones, right? It'll be uh, very similar that way and uh, the same machining. That way I kind of save up on tooling time and, you know, doing setups over and over again so much. So that's why I'm doing them both at the same time. Uh, anyway, let's take a closer look at them and see what we got to do. Here's the two bases. Now... This one here has been kind of already marked up a little bit, right? And I also did a little bit of machining on it already. Now, I did this um, while I was doing the cylinders. I, I ran into it. When I did all the modeling, let me put it this way. When I did all the modeling, I noticed a few things. And I decided to try to uh, maybe, maybe correct a little bit of it. And, Make it make this a little bit better. Uh, so, in the in the drawings that I got with this, the the holes in the bosses, they weren't really in the middle of the boss for these shafts. And I go well. Let's see what why why is that right? I found that the holes for the the bores for these shafts weren't in the middle of the boss on the drawing. So, and I made the drawings and I mean I redrew the whole thing and. I go well. What can I can I get that so the so the, the holes are in the middle of the bosses? It would just look a little bit better. And uh, so I I kind of had to change some dimensions. And I put the I put the bores in the middle of the bosses. So I had to measure this it accurately to figure out where that would be exactly. And that's why. So what I did is I I ended up. I decided I'd machine the whole end up off of this to square it up. I machined the base and and the and and then this surface here where the where the piston or the cylinder rides top. This is a reference surface here, the top. And so I made the end a reference surface, and then this side is a reference surface. Uh, so that's how I machined it using this mainly using this side as a reference and then making it all, all to that and then the base to this. And I marked out, you know, I figured out exactly where the well, relatively exactly where the centers of these bosses were. And in doing that, that led to uh, changing a couple dimensions on the on the cylinder itself. And uh, because of the stroke, I was able to keep the stroke the same actually, but by changing just a little bit of the dimension on the cylinder, I could make this all work a little bit better. And I changed the, I think, the length of the connecting rod a tiny bit uh, to to get a a good, you know, full effective stroke. And uh, and I also adjusted the porting to line up a little bit better. All, um, not the spacing of where the ports are in here, left that the same, uh, just the angle of the port in the cylinder. Uh, in the, they had on there 30 degrees on the cylinder and I made it 28 degrees. And if you, you see the previous video, you'll see I was using 28 degrees. And, that, and that's why. So that, cause because I changed the length on the one end a little bit to give me a little bit of clearance more on the end of the connecting rod and it fixed the stroke a little bit by moving the cylinder back a little bit and uh, I, it's I, aesthetically I think it will be a little bit better looking and I think it's actually going to work a little better because the port lineup should be a lot better. 
uh, especially on the rotational part and not but not going past the port so much uh, the model looks real good and so that's why this one is already I machined this one a little bit already but I, I made the cylinder the same uh, uh, for the for the other engine and uh, but this one is a, is a different kind of engine though where there's a there's a rocking beam right and the cylinder is vertical and rocks back and forth like that but anyway that's a this is the 2007 one and this was 2005 so we have a lot we haven't I didn't do any machining on this one yet so I got a lot, lot of machining here to do here and this is the drawing for the the smaller engine the aluminum M, the horizontal engine this is the base for it so uh, you can, I think everything's pretty much on here uh, the only thing I noticed I didn't do is put the diameter of the portholes on here but I'll add that uh, so I've I have adjusted a little bit the sizing from the original drawings the distance between these two bores so that they would center up in the hub and uh, actually that's probably the only real dimension I changed was that on here on the base is the center to center distance there and I adjusted the end from the end also a tiny bit it's very very close to what it was originally but uh, I since I did mill this hole in, I adjusted this to be more accurate and get the bores in the center. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, tell me how you like this, uh, look at a drawing this way. This is on a computer screen here in the shop. And it's kind of nice because I can actually use a pointer instead of a mouse to point out any uh, specific details. Over here shows you the angle of the ports over here and now this is this drawing here is is showing you pretty much the whole thing in one shot uh, if I would just separate it out I could I could show this in more detail obviously on a separate page which I still might do is so you can so you could see all this stuff a little bit better that way they could be larger on the sheet I have the base mounted here in the on the milling machine and what I did is I have a parallel up against the reference surface against the fixed jaw so that will hold that uh, fairly it's a thick parallel it's a half an inch thick and so that hold that pretty much perpendicular with the and parallel with the fixed jaw and then I threw another one in here and that's resting on the face where the cylinder goes uh, this is the important side right now and then I just threw one in here for it to kind of sit on give me a little bit of a height and then what I did is I ran this the dial indicator in test indicator across here now there's a little hollow spot in here but I, I've got it pr pretty flat uh, within a thousands or a couple thousands I should say uh, from end to end uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this is mounted. I think it's going to be uh, stay solid enough uh, to deck that off. We'll, 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 I'm going to hit it with a fly, fly cutter and uh, Yeah, we'll turn off some lights here and we'll, we'll run the indicator kind of across here. So right at the end, you know, I'm one, two thousandths. And a little low spot right there in the middle. And it kind of comes back up here at the end in about the same area, one, two thousandths. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And then it's sloped in that direction, this direction. Uh, it's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the, it, the reference surfaces are what I'm more concerned about. Having this side 
parallel and square to the fixed jaw. So when I deck this off, hopefully those are going to be pretty square. Little WD. Now I'm running my fly cutter there at 1850 RPM, roughly. This is my Don Cossett fly cutter. I love this thing. A lot of mass to it. Holds a big tool. I got a high speed tool in there. And it, do, it does a great job. So solid. That was two cuts of 25 thousandths each. Now we'll do about maybe 10 more here. And uh, I'm just going to take off the bare minimum just so it all cleans up. The only spot it's not cleaned up is over there. We'll slow it down for the final here. Very smooth, uh, machine mark wise, eh, there's a little bit, of, got a little harmonics or something over here in the corners, but uh, it, it's smooth, you can't really feel anything. So I'm pretty happy, that, that, that'll be fine for the bass, just fine. I just set that right down on the bed of the vise. Nice and solid, clamped in there, nothing special. Uh, I have about, about 50 thousandths I need to take off of this top here. 2.1 is my height, that way I can measure right from here to the, to the bed. We got a high speed steel Niagara cutter in here, four flute, uh, three quarter inch.
I just cleaned off about 20, 20 thousandths just to, so I can get a good measurement here. And I'm just using a height gauge, I mean a depth gauge, <laughs> height gauge, depth gauge here. And we can just set that on the flat and So I'm at 2121. It's about 21 thousandths. Let's we'll creep up on it here. We're going to do 15 and measure it again. Six thousandths, and that makes it twenty-one. So that was pretty good. And always make sure your work's right before you take it out, if you can. Uh, no, half a thousand low. It's okay, half a thousand. We'll, we'll, we'll take that. I have a seven eighths four flute high speed steel and what's that three something inches <laughs> almost four inches depth of cut. I don't remember where I got this one. Anyway, uh, I have, it's enough here, it's two point one inches, so I have enough here to face that whole thing off in one or a couple passes I should say that but the whole height at once. And should I have it set for the one nice kind of square edge on there, so it uh, should be fairly square with everything. Kind of. <laughs>
a little bit of roughness there in the middle. Uh, not too bad. Maybe we'll file that a little bit or something, but not too bad. It's really non-critical service. There's more to clean it up so we can put the ports and, and something to measure from. Uh, even though they don't measure really from there, but we, uh, I'm, I want to measure from a fixed surface. Well, we're looking good here. Base against the fixed jaw reference surface underneath on top of a nice big thick thick parallel, which I need to probably tap down a little bit, huh? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you know, it's a cast surface. It's not like perfectly flat, but it's pretty nice. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that's that's tight. There. Yeah. And then we're gonna we're gonna mill this off to get this to. Um, the prescribed thickness, <laughs> whatever that is. I'll go look at what, what that is. <laughs> That's so much from the uh, reference surface, so I'll have to be able to reach in there with a mic and measure that. So this thickness will be 600 thousandths, and we, we're about 648 right now. We'll just get this flat so we can uh, get a measurement and know exactly how much we need to take off here. Thirty nine. Sixteen. Should be the last cut. So far, the casting is very nice. Uh, not any inclusion so far, or really any sand. Uh, we're, it's a pretty nice casting. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah. Make sure we're clean here. I'm measuring. Remember, the other side's a casting side, so you know how. Six oh three and a half. Six oh three. No. Oh man, 601 tenth. I think we're 600 right there. 601 there. Okay, so we're good. Now we need to deck this off. Now we're looking at from the reference surface, which will be now it will be the top of the parallel. Uh, 0.772. So we're just going to clean it up first. I'll just reach over there, measure this. So we're looking at 27 more thousandths off of there. Three more. Right on the money, 772. All right, pop it out, we'll do the other side.
I'm not drilling these holes yet until I uh, actually determine placement. That's why I'm not doing them yet. We'll have to put it back in again. I flip the part over, big parallel underneath against that, the, the surface that we machined for the cylinder. This is the reference surface side. This needs to be 525 above the reference. But I'm just going to add the 600 that's here. This is really could be 15, 20 thousandths either way because this, this is just for the spring to push against to hold the cylinder tight. So uh, this is, doesn't have to be super, super accurate really. So I'm just going to use the other side when we'll be within five thousandths without a problem. So I need to be an inch and an eighth from the parallel. So I have about 25 thousandths really. I'm just going to clean it up. Actually, I might just leave it just like that. that. It's cleaned up, but it has that nice little round radius right there from uh, the casting, which looks kind of nice. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it just like that. Just because 15, 20 thousand either way isn't going to make a lick of difference on the with the spring pushing there. I like that look.
This is up on a couple of small V blocks with a gap in between so I can drill right in through this. Now I've got my scribe point in there just to double check uh, my little scribe lines I had. And it's right on the money and it looks real good. It's right in the middle. There we go. Look at that. That's, that's better than a wiggler. There we've reamed it to 5 16 and this is a 312 pin minus and that goes in just beautiful that's beautiful there's gonna be a bushing in here because the shaft is only 3 16 but that that's perfect and the three three one three oh i could pound it in i guess but that's just right so my reamer did a great job on that not all reamers are bad perfect now we'll move over and drill that one Moved over to the other one and uh, the same line, inch and a half, and then 2.149 over, and we are right looking real good, really nice. 
That'll be fine. This is a 3 8 hole, this one. All right, I reamed it to 375 and uh, 374 goes in there real easy. Actually, just real nice, actually. Uh, 375 is nice. It's a little bit goes, but it's snug. I think I'll leave it. I'm going to put bushings in here also, so uh, I'll be fine. And 376 won't go, of course, at all. So we'll just, uh, we'll. Just do that. Call that good. Now we gotta flip it over. And we have two holes on the end to, end to do and the ports to do on the other side and the counter and the counter bore also. On the other side.